Well, as the opioid crisis continues to have a stronghold across America, a new vaccine is showing promising results that may stop opioid users from getting high. University of Houston researchers say they've created a vaccine that blocks synthetic fentanyl from entering the brain and eliminating the high aspect of the drug. And they hope to begin clinical trials in humans in the coming months. Now, according to a recent report from the White House, there have been over 180,000 opioid overdoses within the the last year. Let that number sink in on your screen there. Dr. Ryan Marino, Medical Director of Toxicology and Addiction Medicine at University Hospitals in Cleveland, joins us now to discuss what this development means. Uh, welcome to the show and thanks for coming on. So you've been quoted on the opposite side of the argument for a fentanyl vaccine. So what is your concern about this potential treatment option? So first of all, like you said, overdoses are a big problem. And any additional tools that we have are definitely a good thing. Uh, my concern is that the big moonshots like this distract from the fact that we have a lot of available and very evidence-based options that could reduce these overdose numbers already, uh, and we're not we're not utilizing them. Interesting. And and, and what type of um, strategies should we be using then that are already available? Would you say? So we have very good medicines that can help people get into recovery. Uh, and so I think the target group who would want this vaccine, we already have three very good medicines that are, are available, but not widely available and not available enough. We also have a very good antidote for overdoses, Narcan or Naloxone, uh, and that remains underutilized with a generic not yet on the market. So why would you say then that, that, that those resources haven't been utilized enough to see that number go down then, you know, since they have been available, is it just sheer lack of access to these um, resources or what, what, what's the reason? Yeah, unfortunately the biggest limiter is our, our policy. Um, and so on state, federal, and even local levels, these are kind of limited every step of the way. Uh, there are people who are working on trying to expand access, but for someone who is using fentanyl is at risk of a fentanyl overdose, their ability to uh, engage in kind of treatment and get into recovery is significantly limited because of the policies that we have in place at the country. So the studies showed that the anti-fentanyl antibodies uh, used in the vaccine did not react to other op um, opioids. However, you've noted that the blocking of fentanyl is one of your concerns since it is still used in hospitals under certain circumstances. Uh, so what problems could there be interfering with its ability to enter the brain uh, create for the medical field? Well, so I think one thing that people kind of lose sight of in the context of our fentanyl crisis right now is we do have all these people overdosing on fentanyl on the street, but fentanyl remains a very valuable medicine and something that is used almost ubiquitously in healthcare, um, literally 24-7, 365. And people need it for pain, people need it for sedation, um, people who are critically ill, uh, and even people who just have chronic illnesses, which is a large percentage of Americans. And so taking away one of our best tools to treat those people uh, in any situation that they might need it is also another big concern. And we, we also use analogs of fentanyl that would likely have cross-reactivity as well. So at the end of the day, I mean, you can have, you know, different resources, different drugs that will help someone get into, um, you know, whether it's facilities or Narcan, you know, with police officers or ambulance drivers, things like that. Um, and then this vaccine that we're talking about right now. At the end of the day, though, I mean, that's kind of glossing over the fact that there is this massive problem lying underneath surrounding addiction. So how dangerous can this vaccine that, you know, some people may look at as, okay, this is some type of cure for this, or this is some type of way to get away from um, opioids, um, kind of distract from the idea and the, the, the knowledge that there is still this huge addiction issue in our country? Yeah, I mean, I think it is really a big problem. And the people who are most at risk of overdose and who would benefit the most from any sort of treatment or protection are people who are intentionally using drugs. Mm -hmm. And regardless of kind of your feelings about who is using drugs and why they're using drugs, um, we want those people to be safe. And we don't want more Americans to die from overdoses or even experience overdoses that are not life-threatening. Um, these are people who are our neighbors, our friends, our family members. I think at this point, it has probably touched everybody in this country in some way, uh, one form or another. And so remembering that we need to give them whatever options we can to keep, keep them safe, whether they're ready to stop using drugs um, or whether they want, want something else besides this vaccine. 
All right, Dr. Ryan Marino, Medical Director of Toxicology and Addiction Medicine at University Hospitals in Cleveland. Thank you so much for your time.